Weren't you wondering what kind of a name is Star Lord? I'm watching a Marvel movie, so no, I'm not. No, but in the Marvel movie, they're showing an Earth's mother name her son Star Lord as a kid. Who calls her son Star Lord? That's like, it's like when I have a son, I'm gonna call him Rahul, but his nickname will be Space Boss. Mancha. In a world filled with war, hate. Suffering and Justin Bieber. Two guys fix it all with a battle about a movie. One film, two opinions, one coin, two sides. They feud. You decide. It's time for Film Feud. Hello and welcome to another episode of Film Feud, the podcast where we debate whether top-rated movies should be top-rated. I'm Vidur. And I'm Vikram. What's up, Vikram? Nothing much, man. Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year. You ready for some 2019 feuds? Oh my God, so ready. And you ready for the first feud of 2019 today? Let's do it. Mind telling the good folk, the new listeners we have in 2019, what we're about to do here? For sure. So we take a movie from the IMDb Top 250, we toss a coin, heads argues for and tails argues against. Simple enough. And the movie we are feuding today is Marvel's Cinematic Universe's surprise hit, Guardians of the Galaxy. Guardians of the Galaxy. Part 1. Part 1. I was kind of surprised this movie was on the IMDb Top 250, not gonna lie. I was not, actually. Really? Is this what the list is reduced to? Just Marvel movies? It's not just Marvel movies, and if there are Marvel movies on it, then this kind of makes sense. Middling commercial blockbusters? Yeah, I mean, we've seen what the list is like over the course of this podcast. So yeah, this wasn't that big of a surprise for me. Now, I'm sure we watched this movie in theaters, both of us. Yeah, I saw this movie when it came out, for sure. I've seen it a few times after as well. I have as well. It's a good, you know, fun, um, you know, background, maybe foreground movie, depending on how you feel about it. Yes, I know, I know. Which I will soon reveal after we have the coin toss. Why don't we just get to it? I'm a little uh, constricted here in terms of my feelings. (laughs) I feel you, man. Let's do this coin toss. Okay, well, I'll be tossing the coin. Heads means I argue for the movie and tails means I argue against. Let's go. And it's tails. Uh Uh-huh. And? Middling, (laughs) surprising (laughs) entry to the list, as I mentioned. I did reveal my feelings a little bit. Yeah, I'm so stoked, man. I love this movie. I think this is the best Marvel movie. It's the best Marvel movie. It is hands down the best Marvel movie ever made. These guys have been trying to recreate this movie ever since it released. So I'm so excited that I'm it's for this movie. It's the hands down best Marvel movie it ever is made. The hands That's what down. you're leading with it is before we even down. get into the feud. Yeah, 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 I'm super excited to be for this movie, man. Let's bring it. Let's do this. You, you've come with a very uh, uh, front-loaded energy to 2019, I have to say. New year, new beginnings, my friend. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, I watched this movie in theaters as we discussed. I thought it was okay. Of course you thought it was okay. Who are these people? Who are these people? Why should I care about them? What is Gamora? What is Gamora? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we'll get to it. Why don't we go watch the movie again? It has been a while. I'm, I'm, I'm okay with watching it again, reevaluating fresh perspective. And uh, let's view it. For sure. But before we do, a quick shout out to our sponsors. Oh, that's right. Thanks, Vikram. This episode is sponsored by Flow Mattress. What is Flow Mattress? The promise of the deepest sleep of your life. They have a unique 100-night trial policy, so you can actually sleep on the mattress for 100 nights. And if you're not sleeping substantially better, then you can send it back for a full refund, no questions asked. That's exciting. And because the mattresses are shipped directly from the factory to you without any middlemen, they are 50% cheaper compared to traditional brands. They actually start from only 9989 Log on to flowmattress.com, that's F-L-O mattress.com, to find out more about this disruptive offering. Film Feud listeners get an exclusive 10% discount when they use the code Film Feud on their purchase. I don't know about you, but I'm actually about to order a Flow Mattress. I'm pretty excited. No middleman, dude. No middleman. Game changer. Okay, should we get to it? Let's go watch the movie. Let's go watch the movie. Ugh. I'm so exhausted. Ugh. 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 I want to express to our listeners uh-huh. my internal emotion. You can actually take out the actual sound instead of how it's spelled, you know? Ugh. Ugh. 
Is that closer? <laughs> Better, but not close enough. It's more like, sigh. <laughs> what is this? This is, I, I hadn't seen it in a while. This is the wrong name for the movie. Dude, this movie is fantastic. The, this movie is, is, a, is a quip fest. That's it. Quip fest? And it's a comedy movie before Thor Ragnarok actually cracked how to make Marvel movies comedy movies. This movie should have been called Guardians of the CGI Quip Fest. That's all it is. Guardians of the CGI Quip Fest. Yeah. I was thinking Quip Fest of the Galaxy was better. Okay, CGI Quip Fest of the Galaxy. Right. C- also, did you just say that Thor Ragnarok cracked the whole comedy in Marvel movies situation? Yeah, this was just a feeble attempt. Are you are you slightly ashamed? Which actually gets me to just the most obvious point here. Thor Ragnarok obviously did it better. But they had the time, you know, they were able to use this movie, correct the mistakes it made. But there are movies that came out before this movie that did it better. Firstly, the whole like team coming together. Plenty of superhero movies have done that better. X-Men did it better. X-Men 1, for instance. This hurts me to say, but dude, honestly, Suicide Squad did it better. A team coming together of nobody's unknown people, kind of like villainous bad guys, but they end up being good. This is it. This movie is Space Suicide Squad. Better name, by the way, SSS. SSS. <laughs> better than GOTG. <laughs> Suicide Squad. I don't even know why we're talking about Suicide Squad. You Because it's a team of villainous people coming together. Which brings me to the next one. Do you remember LXG? LXG? LXG. No, I don't. Just whirl your, your brain gears for a moment and try to remember LXG. It had Nasruddin Shah in it, Sean Connery in it. The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen did it better. I don't even know it. Also based on a comic. Dude, are you done? Also, of course not. The oh, okay. space adventure element, this like stupid Star Wars world they built. My problem is they actually messed up the Marvel cosmic world building. I actually never liked the cosmic side of Marvel, but then they just converted into Star Wars in this movie, right? There's different planets and different creatures. Oh, look, this alien is pink. And oh, look, John C. Riley is married to a pink alien with a pink baby. And then they have different planets. Before this, it was just Asgard. And those people look like humans. And then I guess Avengers had like aliens coming in, but we were like, oh, it's an alien attack. And now this is par for the course. I mean, it's like Star Wars if it had Earth in it. And there's a reason it didn't. But my point is, Starship Troopers did it better. Uh, you're, just, you're just naming all the Star movies that you can think of, right? This Starship Troopers was exactly this. Like one villain versus some bugs or whatever they were fighting. Rise of the Guardians, which had Santa Claus and... Mr. Frost and other such characters. That was a better Guardians movie than this movie. I'm willing to bet my left nut that you haven't seen Rise of the Guardians. I have. That you only did the research just because this movie was not part of the feud. This is coming from the heart. Your it, Google right. search was Rise of the Guardians versus Guardians of the Galaxy. And whatever you could scrape through, you're just like pouring it into this show right now. I'm going to name the first movie that I haven't seen. Every movie before this I've seen. And I truly oh, so, believe so it. That is better. a movie you haven't seen. Okay. Legend of the Guardians, The Owls of Gahul. <laughs> made by the legendary director Zack Snyder, a comic book auteur. Uh, that movie did it better. It's not an auteur. He just did Watchmen, man. That's all he did. He's a comic book auteur. He did 300. He did Watchmen. He did Batman vs. Superman. Mm-hmm. And he did Legend of the Guardians, Owl of Gahul, better Guardians movie. Gahul. Is that the actual name of the movie? It's G-A apostrophe Hool. Doesn't matter. Point is better. Did it better. Mm-hmm. I'm done now. Thank God, man. We can actually get started with this. Firstly, dude, I'm not going to I'm not going to reply to everything that you said cuz most of it was bullshit but the point about Thor Ragnarok still sticks with me dude I think this is I'm serious this is the best Marvel movie ever dude all the Marvel movies after this were just trying to recreate this magic and obviously failed at it you know people talk about the Marvel formula like Marvel has a formula for making his movies James Gunn was the guy who created this formula Joss Whedon created the Marvel formula no, they were they were they were trying to work a formula together. And if you notice the movies that came out before this, they were very imbalanced in terms of what they were trying to achieve. But after this movie came out and obviously was super successful because of a reason, each movie after that has been trying to recreate this formula. James Gunn was a mad scientist who came together, took all these elements, and then just just created the perfect formula for these movies. No, and now and now Marvel relies on this formula. Every movie, Thor, Ragnarok, all the Avengers, they're all trying to do the same thing. James Gunn's formula was to put as many blue people as he could in a movie. Oh, this guy Drax, he's blue. And then there's this villain, Ronan, worst villain ever, by the way, we'll get to it, he's blue. Also, there's this guy Yondu, he's blue. Oh, by the way, there's this big baddie, Thanos, he's blue. Oh, and then he has his daughter, Nebula, and she's blue. I actually agree with you. There's a lot of blue in this. But Aha. He, say, say you that's concede. That's not a bad thing. Say you concede. Concede what? It's not a bad thing. Too much blue. It's this not, movie's too blue. It's not It's not a bad thing. I think they do it really well. And I think James Gunn was trying to do some meta stuff because the stone in the movie, if you notice, is also blue. 
So he was trying to do this whole like, let's make a bluish. No, I think he messed up. He messed up. He's yeah. like, oh my god, my movie's done. There's just so much blue. In Too it. much blue. Yeah. I don't think so. I think I think it actually comes across really well. The whole tonality in this movie, like the visuals, I know they're slightly leaning towards a blue shade, but they actually come across really well. They what, look really good. What he was given a lot of credit for was making this movie colorful. Like before this, the Avengers was some reason was shot with such flat lighting that if you watch it now, it actually looks like a TV movie. And so Guardians was like, oh my god, they're following up the Avengers with this like unknown team. Yeah, they made it colorful. They made it like pretty much kid friendly. And by the way, this movie, along with Jurassic World, converted Chris Pratt, aka Andy from Parks and Rec. They're like, okay, he's now a movie star. That didn't work for me at all. It was it was too much. Like it was one thing when he like bulked up to play the Navy SEAL who kills Bin Laden. That I could get on board with. But him just being like, oh, cool cat or Walkman. I'm going to go get the orbs. I'm a bad dude, leather, overcoat-wearing movie star now. Eh, didn't work for me. All I saw was Andy. He's naturally funny in Parks and Rec. Have you actually seen his blooper in Parks and Rec? It's one of the funniest off the I agree, I agree. Mousetrat for life, man. I'm a huge fan of Parks and Rec and Andy in that show. But I think Chris Pratt really evolved into a film star. Even more than... No, he was forced down our throats as a film star in this movie. I don't agree with you there, man. Firstly... The opening sequence of this movie, right? Best opening sequence ever. You know, best, s- ever. best. Small things like you know, overtones like fonts used for Guardians of the Galaxy, music, CGI. They're all coming together, like and and Star Lord's introduction, like the way he's just singing along, just going, showing him Come as a ravager. It's so good, man. Best Everything, ever. Everything. The wedding from the Godfather, eh, nothing to cha. The wedding from the Godfather is slightly long drawn out compared to this. This is like a couple of minutes. This whole movie is slightly long drawn out. And this movie is slightly long drawn out. Or Godfather. This whole movie uh-huh. is just unnecessary. I don't know, man. I think Star-Lord is a fantastic character and no one apart from Chris Pratt in my head does it better. Weren't you wondering what kind of a name is Star-Lord? I'm watching a Marvel movie, so no, I'm not. No, but in the Marvel movie, they're showing an Earth's mother name her son Star-Lord as a kid. Who calls her son Star-Lord? That's like, that's like when I have a son, I'm going to call him Rahul, but his nickname will be Space Boss. So you have Rahul as the name shortlisted already? No, I don't. This is an example. Rahul Single. Has a nice, <laughs> has a nice ring to it. No, <laughs> doesn't matter. Space Boss Single is what you should Space Boss is a pretty dope name, dude. Space Boss is not a nickname. I prefer, it, oh, I prefer that over uh, <laughs> Rahul any day. Come on. <laughs> it's like imagine there's like a kindergarten class and everybody's going through the nicknames. It's like, oh yeah, I'm I'm Babu and I'm Tinky and I'm this that and some guy was like, I'm Space Boss. Isn't that amazing? I'm Star Lord. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> so dumb. They're making him out to be a fat 2013 Captain Kirk. That's it. Like an updated Captain Kirk. Oh look, he slept with a green alien. And oh look, he's like so cool. And oh look, he's like the natural leader. And also his ship's name is a cookie. W- what's his ship's name? It's called the Milano. It's a dumb ship name. God. <laughs> Milano? It's That's a cookie. Milano, like the word you can only cross-reference in your head to a cookie. That's it. Yeah. Kirk had the Enterprise and Fat Kirk has the Milano. <laughs> it makes sense. <laughs> USS Milano. I like that. I like that. I don't know, man. I love Star Lord, the character, like the way it was written. I haven't read any of the comics, so I have no sort of background to the story. And this this movie was... This movie was so original. It was so fresh. And each of the characters was so original and fresh, dude. I mean, effing Batista's in this movie, dude. Yeah. Kills it. It's Batista. Kills it. Oh, Batista's wait. the guy who does the F5 thingamajig, man. Like, that guy's killing No, that's it. Brock Lesnar. Jeez, I'm so you know sorry. nothing. I'm so sorry, dude. But, like, Dave Batista, as an actor, firstly, I was like, okay, whatever. I don't know what to expect. And he killed it in a comedic role. That's so good. He was the comic relief amongst comic reliefs. I mean, he had good lines. There's no doubt. He had the, a pretty dumb character in terms of what the character does. Perfectly literal character. All right. Is he though? He's not. He, kinda he, is. he is when he needs to be. No, come joke. on, come on. Point out when he's not perfectly literal. I don't care like to note that down. Right. I, I'll give you the concession. There's a few funny lines. Uh, I, I think when he doesn't understand what slitting someone's throat means. Yeah. That seems really, uh, that was forced to me. But then when he says, uh, nothing goes over my head, I'll yeah, catch it. That's catch pretty good. Yeah. But the slitting thing, like, it's it's such an Earth thing if you think about it, right? It doesn't necessarily have to be a thing on other planets. So it makes perfect sense. Oh, yeah. But cassette tapes, that's fine. But Jackson Pollock references, that's fine. He's, he's not paying attention then. He's not paying attention then. Jeez. <laughs> Let's talk about more important characters. Uh-huh. I can't decide between which one's worse. So I'll lead with the more important character to the movie as opposed to the Guardians. Ronan. Oh, Ooh. my God. Awful. 
So you know how I was talking about character introductions. I think each character in this movie has a perfect introduction, but Ronan kind of does not. That that that's probably my only concession. Ronan's not. Yeah, the say best. it again. That introduction to Ronan, like naked and then being given armor, and then blood. The whole blood situation. Some blue blood, blue blue skin, so blue blood. Yeah. Oh my god. Worst, the worst Marvel villain along with Malekith from Thor 2. And the sad thing is I can't even differentiate between the two and like look in the way they talk. He's like the caricature of a villain. You know how Groot can only say I am Groot? Ronan, every line Ronan says in that stupid Ronan accent, we will do this and we will do that. Ronan is like Groot except all he's saying in every sentence is like I am evil. That's it. That's his whole thing. He's like a five-year-old movie's villain. That might be true, but he does have a badass hammer, does he? No, he doesn't. He, he kind of does. The hammer can take the power of an infinity stone, man. Yeah, what is that? What is he carrying? What kind of a stupid weapon is that? He's like some Kree warrior, right? Like a He's terror. like a Kree outlaw, actually. And then in the opening introduction, character introduction scene, it's like, oh, they call me terrorist, radical, zealot. What is with this language here, by the way? Like, you think you think that he's translating? That's, that's he has evil, synonyms. That's, that's evil villain language, like one on Come oh on! Oh my god! The worst part is the, speaking of the language. When they show the uh, guardians getting arrested and they show details about each of them, it says that Star Lord actually has a translator chip planted in him. So they're actually trying to justify how everybody in the universe can understand each other. But then it doesn't make any sense because nobody else has it translated and everybody talks. It's okay. You know what? I won't even nitpick. Let's yeah. stay on Ronan. How dumb is he? He never kills the, his foes, by the way. So stupid, right? He always, like, even with Drax, like, what, what is he doing? Drax calls him to wherever they're trying to sell the orb, right? Nowhere. Nowhere. Yeah. And then he just goes like, oh, Nebula, you go get the orb for me, the thing that's most important in the world to me, while I fight this random guy who's called me, and I pretend not to remember his wife and children, and then later on I pretend, and then I'll fight with him, and I'll beat him one-on-one, -on -one, and then I won't kill him, I'll just throw him into, like, some yellow water. Like, would you want him to rip Drax apart, like, the only short shot way of killing him? That'd be legit, but also he does the same thing on the ship, he just doesn't... I understand, obviously, you can't have the protagonist get killed, but show it in a better way. Show it in a way that doesn't make your villain seem stupid. But don't you think if Groot wouldn't have been there, Drax would have been dead? No, I mean, it's the comic book version of uh, when a villain ties up the hero and then walks away and his henchmen kill him, you know, and then instead... The... No, it's the comic book version of me tying bricks to your ankles and throwing you into the sea, assuming that you're going to drown to death. That's the one time. They do it over and over again. He just refuses to get... It's okay. It's fine. You know, if you treat this as like a kid's movie, you can justify it. But there's ways to do it in a kid's movie, right? Harry Potter's a kid's movie and a kid's book. But still, Voldemort killed people. The stakes became real because he was killing people. And also, Ronan, what is his power set? This man was taking those Hadron gun blasts to the chest, the gun that's supposed to destroy after, his ship. After he had the Infinity Stone. So he's he's someone who can wield the Infinity Stone. That automatically means that he's a very powerful being, right? That's well established in the Marvel movies. He's like a Bollywood villain, dude. He's like literally the Mogambo of the Marvel cinematic. Mogambo cannot, cannot wield an Infinity Stone. Of course he could. No, he could not. Of course he could. No, where would it go in like his fucking <laughs> Matha or something? What are you talking about? Why are we talking about Mogambo and how he or he would or because not be able Ronan to... Ronan is a caricature. Ronan. Kushua. He might as well be saying that. No, he's Ronan the the destroyer, right? Is he? I think so. I don't think so. He has a badass ship and a badass hammer. And he's pretty powerful, man. Like for him to go for him to go stand up against Thanos and just tell his minion off, it goes to show like it establishes that he's a very powerful being. Like Xandar is shit scared of him for a reason, right? But he's Thanos' bitch in the beginning. He and Thanos have an alliance. There's there's nothing about being a bitch. That scene cl clearly establishes that he's not his bitch. Actually, that Thanos scene, firstly, this was the introduction of Thanos before they actually figured out how they're going to make him look. So now it irks me after Infinity Stone to see how he looks. That's besides the point. I'll let it go. I'll be the bigger man. There's, there's no... There's, you create a point and then you let the point go. That doesn't mean you're the bigger man. You're just an idiot. Those scenes also introduce Gamora and Nebula. So their relationship is like an important like C-plot of this movie, Right. What is going on here? Like, why am I supposed to care about Nebula and Gomorrah? I don't. But let's just talk about them. Gomorrah, firstly, typecasted Zoe Saldana again. Another colored alien. I think that's really messed up. They really need to expand the roles they give Zoe Saldana. I mean, it wasn't written with Zoe Saldana in mind. She's got casted in it a bit. Yeah, you know, because she did Avatar. I get it. Really weak casting, if you ask me. <laughs> uh -huh. Secondly, Gomorrah, the character... They keep saying this, man. They did this in Infinity War 2 because it started in this dumb movie. She's the most powerful weapon in the universe. She's Thanos' daughter and she's like a badass. 
And then, then the first scene where you see her trying to retrieve the orb. Do you remember what a strategy is to get the orb from Star Lord? So Star Lord tries to sell it to that guy. Yeah. The guy says, "No, I can't deal with uh, anybody Ro- who's related to Ronan." Gomorrah standing outside. She snatches the orb from his hand, kicks him in the chest. And then just runs away. Like literally what my strategy would be to get <laughs> an orb from Star-Lord. But then obviously she doesn't know it's Star-Lord. She doesn't know what to expect. She probably thinks he's just some just some Chomu guy. She's the most powerful weapon in the universe. Yeah, but she's also compassionate. She doesn't want to do willy-nilly killing. So she just takes it and she's like, okay, this is good enough. I can go. And then obviously there's Groot and Rocket there to foil everyone's plans. Okay, but what about when she knows when Star-Lord is actually giving her a fight in the middle of Xandar, by the way. Like, mm-hmm. I don't understand the strategy there. Why isn't she able to easily overpower Star-Lord if she's at because all Because Groot and Rocket come into the way as well and they have much more powerful weapons at their disposal. That whole scene is so dumb. That's the introduction of all four of them. And it's just like, oh, look, we're going to have a playful fight. But it just shows how weak they all are. It's and not a playful fight, dude. Some of those, like the gun that Rocket has looks like it hurts. What are you talking about? That gun that comes out in 3D. That's the whole point of it. Yeah, like the whole net 3D. thing. And then his his idea is not to kill anyone because he has to capture them for the bounty. So I think that's that scene, it's actually only Groot and Rocket's introduction, but the scene of them coming together and showing them, like it's the first time the Guardians are on screen together. It's kind of cool. My my point is that the Gamora is just not that powerful and they keep saying she is. She can barely kick ass hand to hand. And then also, they keep saying that she is so much more powerful than Nebula. Nebula gets shot in the face, and then she just like click, 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 clack, 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 readjusts her android body back. Mm-hmm. Like, Gamora can't get shot in the face. Gamora can barely fall off a yeah, cliff. Yeah, but, but no one can shoot Gamora in the face. That's the point. You can push her off a cliff. Yeah, Gamora's like, Gamora's like uh, uh, Nebula, sorry. He's like, you know, she's there. You shoot her, you break her. She'll come back to life, but then you can shoot her and break her. But Gamora, you can't. Oh, you, you can't. You'll she's miss too her. fast. She'll yeah. catch it. Too fast. She's like dragged. Too fast. Yeah. Oh my god, so lame. And the the dialogue they have between Gomorrah and Nebula, he will kill us all, she tells Nebula when she's against Thanos. And Nebula says, no, you will already be dead. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a pretty heavy dialogue. That's so lame. I don't know what you're trying to say here. That's so lame. Gomorrah is like a weak trinity. Is a weak trinity? Yeah. Trinity from Matrix. Yeah. Mm, I don't agree, I'm sorry. It's just, it makes no sense. Tight leather outfit, ass kicking. So that's it. Jesus. So Not much to it. Can't, can't. That and Trinity actually avoided a lot of like female damsel in distress tropes. Gamora's like smack dab damsel in distress, even though she's the most powerful. Literally, she just gets knocked into space and then Peter rescues her. And there's a full damsel in distress moment where he's sacrificing himself for her. How lame is that? That actually, that Gamora saving sequence was a little weak. He could have just uh, popped his ship open. Gone out, got Gamora, put her back in the ship, and then just used his face mask thingy and just and just on. chill. Yeah, yeah. He didn't even need to call Yondu. Yondu. Yeah, it, that 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 scene was a little weak, but I think that's super nitty gritty, so it doesn't really matter in terms of the overall picture. The overall picture is brilliant, man. It's so good. What? Do, how can you not like this movie? It was so fresh. There was no Marvel movie that did this before, and there's obviously no Marvel movie that's been able to do this after this movie came out. Space Suicide Squad. Space Suicide Squad was the worst, probably Venom and Suicide Squad are the worst superhero movies ever made. How can you even put them in the same bucket as Guardians of the Galaxy? It makes no sense. Because the motivations aren't aligned. Like, the, the script isn't written well. Like, what is the inciting incident for when the Guardians decide to become good people? They all have their individual reasons, don't they? And it's very clearly shown. Except for Rocket, who's just doing it because all his friends are doing it. And Rocket's motive is that he doesn't have any friends or people who care about him. So it's very clearly shown what individual motives for these people are. But what about Star-Lord and Gamora? They basically go to Benicio, which, you know what, I want to get to. Another waste of Benicio. Reminded me of Star Wars. But they go to uh, the Collector, and then they see his, like, slave girl kill herself by touching the stone. Mm -hmm. And so then what? There's a mini explosion. That's not, it's not, it's a massive explosion. And immediately they're willing to give up like billions of credits Mm -hmm. because they're like, oh my God, we can't let someone have it. And like, now we must deliver it to Nova. Why? Why did that happen? The the motivation, the the thing that leads in the second act is so dumb. Because, see, Gamora's motives are clear, right? She's not, she's claiming to be, no, she's not claiming, but she's actually Thanos' adopted daughter, but she hates him because of what what he did to her planet. And, 
Peter Quill, you know, inherently is a nice guy. He might be, he might be a ravager. He might be like a bounty hunter, or whatever it is. But then after he sees the power of this stone, how does he see it? With that explosion, it's a small explosion. It's not a small rocket, explosion. Rocket could have done much worse in like five minutes. No, it's not. It's it's an explosion of someone touching a stone. So it's not the stone's true power. It's that's how powerful the stone is actually is. I don't know that. It's just the collector tells some dumb story. And then they see the explosion happening in front it's of them. Small what, explosion. What do you define small explosion? It barely kills. A building f- fucking blows up in their head, dude. It kills one person. And they immediately extrapolate, oh my god, we have to save billions. No, it happens because some pleb tried to touch the stone with their hand. So they understand what the power of that stone is. So Gomorrah obviously is turned in terms of not trying to make profit out of this, but to to put it in safekeeping. And then Peter Quill agrees as well. Because he has a thing Rocket for Gomorrah. Re- yeah, and then Rocket reluctantly agrees because he wants money over anything else but his friends are doing it so he's like ah, maybe I'll do it Groot convinces him yeah by saying very convincing argument I am Groot I am Groot can't go wrong with that whatever man the change in mind is dumb dude that's all that matters it's dumb I don't think so I think the transition is pretty seamless like it, you know like some action movies it's pretty evident like you get to know that oh my god second act starting now oh my god third act starting now but with this one I felt like it flowed pretty well no the third act starts very clearly with a lame round table where they make stupid quips It's just like, oh, that's a fake laugh. Oh, that's like 10% of a plan. Such a lame sequence. Like such, you can tell like the three comedy writers who wrote it down thought it would be funny. Then they rehearsed it and they blocked it and then they said it and like literally forced it to make it funny. I think think Rocket did a really good job in that scene. I'll give credit to Bradley Cooper actually there in general for Rocket. And Bradley Cooper, now that I watched The Star is Born... I have to say, this guy really knows how to use his voice. Like, they worked on a voice for Bradley yeah. for Rocket. Yeah. And it works because usually I get pretty peeved if I can tell who's behind the voice. Hmm. Especially if it's supposed to be a totally different character. It's not an animated movie. Really great job there. And then he started his one, he did like deepen his voice like Sam Elliott. Mad prop. Yeah, I actually, I went into this movie like I usually go like blind completely. Like not watching trailers, not reading up too much. So I didn't know Bradley Cooper was Rocket. And uh, for a good like 20-30 minutes, I remember the first time I was seeing it, I had no idea it was Bradley Cooper. Mm, that's a good experience. They, they did a pretty good job with it, man. I was pleasantly surprised to find out it was Bradley Cooper. And I think they he doesn't do a lot of promotion, promotional touring and stuff with the crew Not as well. This. Vin Diesel actually did a little bit. Do you know how much money Vin Diesel made for Groot? For this movie? Yeah. Wait, wait, let me guess. Uh, did he have like a cut of the profit? I don't know how. Uh, clearly. Uh, 25 million. More than 30 million. What? For this role. What? Because if you think about it, he's the highest profile actor, apart from Bradley, who's doing voice. Even what? Will Bradley. It's ridiculous. He basically struck some deal to like get wh- whatever, some share of profit. Oh my God, he was dude. He was in the top five highest paid actors that year. Because of this and Fast and Furious, I'm assuming. It's ridiculous, man. This man. What has he done? <laughs> this <laughs> ugly mother... <laughs> How does he do it? I don't know. He just jacked up, dude. And he talks like this. Dude, getting back to the uh, third act transition, that lame round table... You know, that's followed by the lamest third act transition ever. It's when they find the slow motion gear up in their X-Men outfits. And then they walk down the cookie ship. And then there's uh, music, which I'm sure you love. I'm sure we'll talk about the music. This movie got so much love. I just don't get it. It reminded me exactly of Suicide Squad. Yeah, you have no heart. I have no heart. Yeah. Yeah. You like- d- wait, Suicide Squad and this movie, I'll tell you the biggest difference, right? They all try to use these pop culture tracks, right? This okay. movie was more dated because they tried to show Peter Quill's 1970s Earth history. And uh, Suicide Squad is throwing songs left, right and center. It's how you use these songs, man. That's a, that's such a stark difference. The soundtracks in both these movies were brilliant. Like, they were really, really famous, really good songs. But then it's how you use them. So, like, Suicide Squad is edited so badly. Like, they would just transition to a, like a different scene. And then they just use a song as let a me, way to let transition. Let me pop quiz you. Pop quiz, okay? What is the song that is playing when this slow motion montaging down the ship ready to go to Xandar? I don't remember the song, but... I remember that scene looking pretty badass, man. The Guardians are finally doing what they're supposed to be doing. Yeah, and because I was watching this movie for the feud, and I know that the songs get so much love, I paid attention to the song. It's the song Cherry Bomb, uh huh, which I didn't yeah. really remember listening. Cherry. It's not ta ta ta. It's literally Cherry Bomb. Fantastic song. Cherry. That's what they're playing on the slow motion montage. Yeah, it's such a good song. It looks lame. It sounds lame. And then and then how they use. Like, just look at the contrasting tones, right? They're using such a fun type song, fun up-tempo song for a scene like that. Whereas Suicide Squad would probably put like death metal on that song. Like, it's 
It's how you use these songs, man. <laughs> Such a good song. I don't know why you're hating on it. No, because it didn't go, man. Why did he get so much love? Why did he get so much? I think music's not your thing. I just, I just realized it now, man. It's, it's not, but good music is. This is not it. You just, you would want just the Beatles playing throughout all movies ever made, right? That would be pretty amazing. They do use uh, George Harrison in the second movie. I love that. It's when uh, Ego shows them the planet. Second movie sucks. I don't Ego. Even want to talk about it. Ah, so we're on the same page about Guardians Two. Part Two, yeah. The second I'll, movie was horrible. I'll get you over to Guardians. Yeah, one. yeah. Bring it, bring it. I think the second movie did a lot of things better. Yeah. Like the music. Like the music? Yeah. Ch-ch-ch-cherry Just because they, they, they use one George Harrison track. At least they didn't use Cherry Bomb, dude. At like a pivotal point, like a second, third act, like transition. I loved it, man. And I'm sure everyone who watched this movie loved it. Bar you. Bar me. Yep. The worst part about it for me was that I think they wasted so much potential and talent in this movie from a pure acting perspective. Think about the, the stars in this movie. Benicio. Totally wasted. Reminded me of that stupid movie, Star Wars Episode Eight: <laughs> The Last Jedi. I don't. You know what? I don't get. Actually, I do get it. But the love for Benicio. Don't say it. Yeah, sort of. You know why? But Benicio is only suited for a particular type of role, which he sort of milked in the late '90s, early 2000s. You're he, talking about Usual Suspects. I thought no, no, that not was just case. Usual Suspects, like Traffic and stuff like that as well, right? Like he. He got a lot of love for those those type of roles. But then it's only one sort of... He doesn't have that much depth, I feel But like. then he did Sicario. It's also a very similar gangsterish type of a role, if you look at it. No, or he does like the out there, like the stutterer, like the usual those are the, Those are the ones I don't like that much, honestly. Yeah, this is one of them. Yeah, so was Star Wars. I agree. I don't I don't think he's that bigger or, or he deserves that much. No, fanfare. I think he does. He's wasted. The fact that you make him dress up. Glenn Close with that stupid hairstyle and then she just walks down... You know, and people salute her and she's like a Nova Prime. I felt bad for her. Also, dude from Blood Diamond, whose name I don't want to butcher, but... Ronan's Minion. Yeah. Yeah. How sad is that? That's what he's reduced to? Wait, except for Blood Diamond, where have you seen him? I saw him as a similar stupid bit part in Fast and Furious. Mm-hmm. I I saw someone who looked very much like him in Captain Phillips. Stop. Now you should stop, okay, firstly. <laughs> Secondly, I don't think that guy's that good an actor, man. He was great in Blood Diamond. Because he's playing a, a, a native role. He's playing a person from that area. So fine, he's good in that role. Doesn't mean he's a great actor. Same thing with Benicio. He's not a star. I mean, John Benicio's C. Riley. I think John C. Riley was fantastic in this movie. What a waste. What a waste. That's, that's, that's the most screen time John C. Riley would get in a mainstream action movie ever in his life that's not true I saw him in King Kong recently and he was actually entertaining in this he's just like oh look I have this pink daughter and you saved her and also like I'm just gonna do some character introductions yeah. I think I think John C. Reilly was kind of fantastic perfectly perfectly timed and like his 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 sequence was just as much as it should have been Karen Gillen my beauty my beauty yeah or is uh, it Gillian? Karen Gillian. Gillian, yeah. I think Karen, my beauty. <laughs> she's know. made to go bald. I think she does a good blue. job in Nebula, man. Yeah, but it's a waste. Also, like... Wait, just because you can't make out her face, it's a waste? Is that what you mean? No, but she's, she, has, she has incredible range. And instead, she's being reduced to just being this annoying I sister. don't think she has incredible range, honestly. What are you talking about, dude? She's awesome she's, in Doctor Who. She's showcasing her range with this. Have you, dude, and may have I, you seen her in Doctor Who? May I just insert? Doctor Who is Gamora. No, it didn't work. No? Didn't work. Okay. And also, have you seen her in Doctor Who? I've seen I've seen all of the seasons where she was in Doctor Who. She's pretty, like... She's fun. She didn't need range there, yeah. but she has range. No, she showcased her range with this movie, is my point. She that's, showcased... Uh, her, that's actually very well done. Her like, blue range. Yandu, whoever plays Yandu, he's wasted. Michael Rooker, I think his name is. He's a big James Gunn collaborator. I think I loved Yandu, man. Not in this movie. He's better in the second one. He has more of a role. I'm saying I loved Yandu. What, what is up with the scene in Yandu where there's, there, there's these, like, stormtroopers who who covering him? Yeah. And then they show his, like, arrow superpower. Yeah. And they just stand around watching him as he one by one kills all of them yeah, in a circle. Yeah, they, because they try to establish that in a slightly slow-mo way. But imagine if all of that happens in a second and a half. The hell are they going to do? i shoot my gun. That's what I'd do. In a second and a half? It wasn't happening in a second and a half. They tried to slow it down to show the the impact of his arrow's power. But you know what happened in the second and a half? In that ending scene in Wanted when Angelina Jolie just kills all of them in one round. That happened in a second and a half. This took like four or five seconds. They slowed it down too. That's what I'm trying to say. It's like you're not even listening to me, man. I'm Who not. am I feuding against? <laughs> yeah, am I feuding against the wall behind your back? What the? <laughs> Jesus, man. <laughs> also, last waist. I can't Ma- believe, by the way, we're talking about this. Oh, four seconds, lag gaye, second nahi laga. Kitni bekar picture hai na? My personal favorite waist. Yaar. I don't know who you're feuding. <laughs> Wait, I have to get this out. Peter Serafinovitz. 
Do you know that guy? Yeah. The guy who plays that Noah Prime uh, fighter who calls them yes. what a bunch of assholes. Do they say yes. that? I don't know. I'm just I'm just agreeing with you, so you just oh, shut up. Are we feuding past each other? <laughs> yeah. This usually doesn't happen. Okay, you know what? The floor is yours. I've named the eight people who I think were waste. <laughs> Which means you went to Wikipedia, looked up the cast No, list. I didn't. I noted it down while. I love all these people. There's not a single you love person. love Glenn Close? Glenn Close is a very... Well, okay, I don't love her. I've, I've seen damages, though. She's good on that. But she's a fine actress. She's like a legend in herself. So that's a waste. The only person who, whose name I didn't know was a guy from Blood Diamond. And I know it's like... There's a J in there. There's an H. Stop, 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 stop. Let's, let's stop there. Before you get to Captain Phillips again. There's there's a silent J. That's why I didn't say it. Okay. I think we're done with this feud, man. And I think we've gotten to a point where our listeners are going to have a tough time figuring out who won this feud. Because you're stupid. Your points were stupid. Only if they're deaf. (laughs) (laughs) Which, in that case, I hope they're not listening to this show. Because there's other stuff they could be doing. Uh But... I, I stick to my point. This movie this movie created the Marvel formula. Every movie after this has been trying to recreate this movie. This is action and comedy, wholesome entertainment, fresh and originality at its best. And I'm sad for whatever reasons. I mean, they might have their reasons, but I'm sad that James Gunn... Cherry bomb! So that was this week's episode of Film Feud. Hope you guys enjoyed. Can I just blast one more cherry bomb, please? Please, I yeah, just please. Have I love that song. Okay, why don't you just tell the listeners what to do and I'll I'll pop it up. Are you are you asking me to start talking so you can cherry bomb blast me? I'm being polite. <laughs> okay, thank you. So, hope you guys enjoyed. And don't forget to... T- I'm waiting for you to do that, by the way. Yeah, I'll get to it. Keep uh, going. Okay, okay. So, so, we feuded and you guys get to decide who you think won this week's feud. You can vote on Facebook, Instagram or Twitter at Film Feud Pod. Or on our website, manchurmedia.com. Yeah, sounds great. Keep going. (laughs) You can also listen to us on iTunes. Please don't forget to subscribe or rate and review us. You can also find us on anywhere you get your podcast, Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. I'm running out of things with it. Well, just to be clear, I'm not doing it. It's called subverting expectations (laughs) and James Gunn could have learned a thing or two from it. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Thanks for that, Vidur. Thanks for leaving me on the hooks there. So again, you're most welcome, Vikram. And thank you for listening, guys. Catch you guys next week. Bye-bye. Next week. Bye-bye.